Hey everyone, and welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at GraphSpy. So GraphSpy is a really interesting program. The author reached out to me on LinkedIn and said, hey, I saw your video on Tokensmith and Evil Jinx. Would you like to take a look at my software? It's uh, another way that attackers are, are bypassing MFA and gaining a lot of access uh, to M365 when they shouldn't be really in there at all. <laughs> so I kind of took some time and dove into it and, and found it to be very interesting, especially like the techniques. I, I kind of like thought, hey, what could I do as an attacker to, to really uh, to use this? And then I thought as a blue tamer and said, what can I do to stop this from happening? So I'm going to kind of show you of both sides of that coin. So we're going to jump in. And when you go to the uh, GitHub page uh, slash red bite one three three seven or I guess leet <laughs> uh, then you have slash graph spy and the installation is actually really easy. It's very straightforward and it has a nice little graphical interface that we're going to spin up to and that I'm going to show you. Let's do this. I'm going to start my computer here. And let me show you how to install it. And also then we'll run through a demonstration of what it would look like from both the attacker and from the victim's point of view. The first thing that we have to do is to get Python installed. So. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do it, go about it. Uh, if we just open up our command line or like PowerShell or something, you can just type in Python. And when it sees that it's not installed, it'll open up the Microsoft Store and you can do it that way. That's fine. Uh, that's uh, just as easy as another one. I mean, you can also use WinGit if you want to, if you're feeling extra nerdy and you want to load it with uh, a command line. But I'm just going to let this finish and run on its own just so you can kind of see uh, like what to expect if you decide to go this route and if you don't want to make it super easy on yourself. All right, so I'll be back in just a second. Okay, after many eons later, we have Python installed. So if we run Python again, ah, it's there. Cool. Now we need to install our software. So it's very easy to do. We're going to be using pip and that is uh, a program that is built into Python. So all we have to do is just type in, let's see here, I believe it's just install pip x, but we are not running Linux. So I think we're just gonna try pip. Pip install graphs by. Can't type today. All right, so it is installing now. Excellent. And I made the text just a little bit larger so you can see this. It's also telling us, uh, this giving us a couple of error messages. It's telling us that uh, the script normalizer is installed, but it's not set on the path. So we need to set the path for this guy. Um, I believe we're gonna need to do that before we actually run graphs by, but let me make sure. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna have to run the path. All right, so let's find the the path here. It wants to have uh, this right here, this slash scripts into the path. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I copy that and now I want to go to my system. And let's see, I'm gonna go to system here. And then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to click on, let's see, advanced system settings. Cool. And now I'm going to go to, you see where it says environmental variables right here. I'm going to click on that. And then under here, I'm going to find where it says path. I'm going to hit new and I'm going to paste that uh, folder right into there. And let's see, I believe I got everything. I think I might have copied that extra little dash. I don't need that. OK, and then OK. We don't need to reboot, but you can if you want to. What I am going to do is I am going to close my terminal window and reopen it. 
Alright, now I believe we're running ready to run a graph spy. And let's see, let's just hit graph spy. Let's try that. And now it's telling us that this is a development server. Don't use this in production. And here's your URL. Let's open up Chrome. And once we have Chrome loaded up, we just need to go to the local host uh, port 5000. So I'm just going to type 127.0.0.1 colon 5000. And once you have done that, you'll be presented with this cool little web page. I'm going to make this bigger so you can see it a little bit better. All right, so once we have that blown up, uh, you have a default database already established. But the really cool thing about this is if you're doing multiple attacks, you can have multiple databases and keep all of your information separate so that they're not overlapping. Uh, one of the very first things that you're going to need is a uh, a refresh token and that will allow you to get uh, the preceding tokens very easily uh, so whenever you authenticate Microsoft gives you access to the, what you've uh, requested but not like everything uh, and for that we're you know, using our refresh token so that'll go back to Microsoft and say hey I, I need an access token for this or I need an access token for that I need an access token for SharePoint Outlook Teams all that sort of stuff so but now we have to do a little bit of sneakiness. Let's go to authentication and device codes. And again, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. Hopefully you see that better. And what we need to do is we need to trick our victim into going to a website. The good news is it will be a Microsoft site, but we also need to trick them into entering a, a, a device code when they get there. Now, the best way of doing this is to think, OK, let's send them something that is very, very confidential. And they need a code to unlock this document. So they need to prove they are who they say they are. They think of it as like multi-factor. So they'll need to authenticate and then they'll need a code to decrypt the document. So that's one way that an attacker could approach a victim and get them to agree to to do this sort of stuff that they normally wouldn't do. So we're going to pretend that I sent that email. We're also going to pretend that poor Douglas over at Renum Industries was the recipient of this email. And so in our phishing email, we are going to have our poor innocent victim head off to uh, this address, which you can see at the top the microsoftonline.com is perfectly legit it checks all the boxes especially if you're really educating your people to to check for the url uh, so the problem is it's asking for this code now and we don't have that code currently so what we're going to do is we're going to hop back over to our graph spy and we're going to generate that code now, the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to just to select office here we're not going to select a resource quite yet I am going to select Office and then I'm going to hit Submit. And what that's going to do is it's going to reach out to Microsoft and it's going to generate this code that you're going to see right here. This is the user code. This is what I need my victim to type into that box so that they can prove who they, they are, who they say they are, and can gain access to my very confidential document. So I'm going to type in BNHCQV8VR and I'm going to hit Next. And next up, it's going to say, all right, well, you need to authenticate now. That's cool. I know my username and password, right? All right. So I'm going to copy my email address. And paste. And then I'm going to copy my password and paste. And now it's asking me for my uh, MFA code. So got to do that. You see right there, I'm getting my MFA prompt. I'm going to just type in 50 and then hit my thumbprint again. And it's saying, are you trying to sign into Office? Well, yeah, of course I am. That's obviously what I'm going to do. OK, you've signed in. That is where we leave our poor victim uh, unsuspecting. And well, that's weird. I didn't get access. Maybe I did something wrong. I'm just going to try it again. Uh, but Douglas, we're going to we're kind of like going to get rid of you for now. If I come back to my graph spy, 
Uh, now it's polling and it'll do this every you know couple of minutes or seconds. But here in a second, yeah, cool, we have success. So what does that mean? That means that we got a couple of tokens from uh, Mr. Douglas typing in his his credentials and doing his MFA for us. We go under tokens and we go to refresh token. You see we have our nice refresh token here at the bottom. We can also go under our access token and we have our access token as well. We go under token options up here at the top right. Let me see if I can make myself just a teeny tiny smaller. If I scroll down, I can select my refresh token. I'm just gonna check this guy and then I'm going to select my access token, check that guy. And now I see all the permissions that I have. What, what is available in my scope uh, according to the, the token that I got from, from Douglas. So I can do quite a lot, actually. I can access all of his email. I have a read and write to a lot of things. I have Teams, so that's good. I can send some Teams messages if I want as well. I have the ability to read files, uh, read and write. So I have everything that I really need in order to give uh, Douglas a really hard time and, and access all of his information. Uh, so in order for me to do that, though, I am going to have to get a couple of different access tokens and that's okay. Um, I'm very patient. I have quite a lot of time left with this token. Uh, the only time that I'm, I'm not going to have is if, if he decides, well, that was weird. I'm going to expire all my sessions. And then my token that I have uh, so ill-gottenly gained uh, may uh, suffer a, a, a swift death. <laughs> so, so what I need to do now is I need to get a couple of different access tokens because the one that I got gives me access to some things, but not everything. So if I go under my tokens and I go to my access tokens, uh, let's see, I need to specify what resource I'm trying to, trying to gain access to. I have Outlook here. I might be able to gain access to his email. Let's do this. I'm going to submit this resource. I'm going to submit it and I have it now. I have a, a new token for outlook.office.com. I'm going to check this box to make this my active one. So I'm working with ID number three right now. So let's head over to Outlook. Uh, I'm working with three. I got that selected. Let's hit open Outlook. And so now I don't have to authenticate. I don't have to be pestered by a username and password. I now just have access to Mr. Uh, Douglas's email and I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to uh, put in any information at all. It's just using that access uh, token that I have gotten, uh, but that's cool. So, but if I jump back here and I go to like SharePoint, maybe I want to start doing some stuff with his files and see what kind of company information I can get. If I jump over here and I hit browse, I'm not getting any information here. I'm getting an access token validation failure, invalid audience. It means I can't use my Outlook one for access to SharePoint. I need to get a SharePoint one. All right, let's head on back. Let's go to tokens. Let's go to access tokens. Let's see, da -da 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 I got Teams, that's cool. Uh, let's see, I have Graph, um, Windows, and Azure Management, nothing there. So if I click on my client, there we go. That's what I want. I want my SharePoint. You don't have to specify both of these. In fact, I found that if you kind of leave it a little like less specific, if I selected one of this and one of that, then it ends up not giving me the right token that I want or access to ID. So yeah, access token. Yeah, I had it right the first time token. All right, let's do this. I refreshed uh, or I submitted and I got myself a, a graph Microsoft one, but it's for SharePoint. Let's see if that gets me anywhere. I'm going to activate this guy at number four. I go back to SharePoint and sites. I'm on number four. I can see here, hit browse. And now it's doing its little chunky thing. Cool. Uh, now I can see all of the SharePoint sites. Uh, what can I do with that? Uh, let's check out uh, accounting. If I drop this down, I get a little information about the SharePoint site. If I click on the little uh, chain link fence right here, that's going to reach out and go into that SharePoint site. Uh, then I can say, all right, what kind of documents do we have under accounting? And got a lot of good information. 
I'm going to go under the folder for banking information. That's got to be good. Cool. And now I can download it. I can uh, see where the exact address is. Uh, so if I want to, I can just pop on down and just, uh, yeah, let it ride. Download a bunch of banking information. So that gives me a lot of a lot of really good access. Uh, Teams is kind of the same way. Uh, you'll generate your access token for Teams. And then from here, you can start sending team messages, uh, start some conversations, maybe uh, request a couple of gift cards for you know, five million dollars and uh, for Apple Pay. And, you know, it's just, um, hey, it's, it's for a meeting. <laughs> I was like, I hope you guys aren't falling for those tricks. I really do. Uh, I do know that this uh, this whole thing is really just to educate you about the dangers of even entering that simple code that like it looked perfectly legit because it was. This, the device code is really, it has a good purpose. It does, it really does. But it also has a nefarious purpose. So educate your your friends, family, coworkers that just because it coming from Microsoft doesn't mean that it's necessarily legit, especially if it's some random email that you've never gotten before telling you to enter a code uh, on Microsoft or really any site. Just take that into account. Honestly, if nobody clicked on anything in an email, we'd probably be okay. Uh, so uh, another thing we can do is maybe we're not having a lot of luck with this person. Maybe they were like low privilege. And I want to want to target the dude that has all of the access. I'm going to head I'm going to head over to enter ID and pretty much every user has this ability. It really doesn't matter what token we use. Uh, I'm going to just hit reload. And there I pulled up the entire user directory uh, inside of uh, inside of Azure. So I can hit any of these guys up here. Uh, I can hit. Let's see. Let's take a look at uh, Alex over here. I can see a lot of their information. This by default is the way that Azure is set up. Uh, look, look at that. I've got his, his information. I got all the groups he's a member of. I got, uh, let's see, a directory role. Hey, man, he has a computer and I can I can take a look at that machine and see if there's something I can do there. Um, and he also had API. So this is all just readily available to pretty much any user, especially if you don't have your environment locked down. So let that be a lesson to you. Uh, from now, uh, from here, man, we've, we've done so much damage. What else can we do? Well, uh, if you do have custom uh, graph requests that you want to make and something that's not included in this software, then there you go. You know, knock yourself out and go crazy with a graph API. So you can't have, you know, your custom stuff. Uh, beyond that, uh, let's see, I'm um, MFA codes. This is probably going to need, yeah, it's going to need a, a certain sort of token. I'm not sure what that one is. I'm sure you can find it. Do some experimenting on your own. Uh, but from here, I think this is where I'm going to leave you guys. I want to say a special thank you to uh, Keanu for reaching out to me on LinkedIn and asking me to, to check out this software. Let's do this. Before we wrap up, I do want to, you to know that there is a way to defend against this. And what is that way? It is disabling the device code in your in your tenant. So don't even let them generate these codes, especially if your clients don't have any idea what they are. They never used them and they're never going to. If it's not being used, disable it. Destroy that attack vector. And what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to leave an article down below in the description that walks you through the entire process of disabling those device codes. It does require you to uh, create a conditional access policy as as far as I know, that's the only way you can do it. But if I find any more information, I will pass it along to you. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, that is where we're going to wrap this video. I hope you found it informative. And if you have any sort of questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you learned something, you found this useful, please consider giving me a thumbs up. It definitely helps the channel. Until next time, you guys stay safe out there. Take it easy.